So today I'm going to show you how I made these realistic looking Sabelt six point harnesses. I used this Edouard uh, photo etch set. These are pretty readily available, but I'll put a link in the description to where I found them. So you've got a photo etch fret here, which is really nice and pre-painted on both sides. As you can see, it's got a slight sort of texture to the belts to make them look more realistic. And then you've got the instructions uh, that you can see here come in for different sections. Part A you'll want to do twice. Now the seat here has been painted and I've also drilled out the holes for the lap belt. The next step is for this particular one to add the decals. Now this one uh, actually doesn't have holes in the decals uh, where the seat belts go through so I'll need to add those holes with um, a blade later on. Used some uh, decal solution to uh, soften this down to help it adhere as best as possible. Left it for at least a day and then came back to it later. And here it is all decaled up. And I opened up those little holes with a craft blade. Now, firstly, as you can see here, the holes aren't wide enough. So you can make them slightly wider by using a craft blade or as I'm using here, a, a narrow file to just widen those holes. And then anywhere where I scratch the paint off, I'll add to it before I add the belts. And there we are, much better. Now the first step is to do these buckles here. These need to be uh, folded very, very carefully. So I'm using these round tipped tweezers to do that. These are very small pieces, so I decided not to use a uh, photo etch bender and the tweezers are, are good enough to do that. And then I gave the belt itself a little bend at the end and fed it through. The tweezers again are very useful here. You may want to use some magnifying glasses because they are very, very small. Then I clamped it together with the tweezers to keep the piece attached. Now the next part here needs to loop around. So I folded the loop into its correct shape first. And this sort of threads in and then out to sort of expose the um, buckle. So as you can see here, I'm then folding this back up and then threading it back down to go through the buckle again, which will keep it nice and secure. did this correct on the uh, left hand belt but on the right hand belt I actually did it wrong as you'll see later when I show you a picture of the finished one. So that, as you can see that is the correct way of doing it. And then I attached the little buckle onto the tip of that, bent it over and glued it into place. So you can see here left one is correct, right one isn't correct but it was glued so I couldn't change it. A little bit of super glue gel helps here. Now you've also got these little buckles which go on the end which fits to the roll cage or some other part of the car. Again, a little bit of super glue gel fits those securely into place and those shoulder straps are now done. So then you've got the waist belt and also this little clip here which goes in the middle. This is made up of six parts. I decided to keep the lower part still attached to the photo etch fret so that I didn't lose it. And again, I used a little bit of super glue gel, which allowed me to move it around and then set uh, nice and securely. You want to lay these kind of star shaped ones on top of each other in the same position, because that way you can later attach them to the buckles themselves. The wax pencil here is very useful for picking up photo etch parts. You can pick those up on websites like eBay very easily. They're meant for uh, jewelers. And then you've got the top section there, which has got the release catch, which again has been painted. Looks very nice. So then time for the lap belts, just like before, test fit them to make sure that they fit. Here I haven't made the holes wide enough, so a craft blade is quite useful just to widen that up. These are very thin. And again, I'm using the round uh, blunt tweezers to help bend them into shape to thread them together.
little bit of super glue gel is useful to uh, secure it when you've folded them over. The last thing you want is them falling apart once you've spent all that time uh, threading them together. And there you are. Then you've got the little buckle which goes on the end. And I decided not to attach the buckles that fitted to the floor because it wouldn't have actually fitted um, the space which is uh, inside the car. You wouldn't see that detail anyway. There we have it, pretty happy with that. Then thread those into place, pull them through and fold down. There's a little uh, slot for those to uh, kind of lie flush against the uh, seat. And then on the other side, I'm attaching the little locking uh, buckle section. Again, with a little bit of super glue gel. Let that cure and then thread it through. And it lays really nicely in the right place on top of the other one. Pretty happy with that. Now finally you've got the uh, last buckle here, so that needs to uh, go into a sort of V shape and then you fit the buckle into the middle, then fold that over and bend that around the front of the seat which would go in between the driver's legs. Again a little bit of super glue gel on the underside of that helped to secure it into place. And then here it was being test fitted into the interior of the car. I fit this with a little bit of super glue to the uh, back kind of parcel shelf section here. But remember, you can always look at reference images to see where it really would be. And there we have it. Hope you've enjoyed this. I really recommend these. I think they add a lot to your racing car builds.